Hi everybody and welcome to Fab Tax. I'm Rosemary and in this video I have seven repurposed bathroom decor and organization hacks where I take items like this old popcorn tin and turn it into this fabulous faux marble waste basket. In addition, I will show you how I made six other coordinating bath accessory and organization DIYs, all using recycled and repurposed trash, creating some great trash to treasure projects. Please remember to like, share, and comment. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. And don't forget to also click that bell so that you're notified every time a new video is published. Without any further ado, let's get started. First, I'd like to take a quick look at some of the recycled trash items I'll be using, including this half gallon milk carton and this hand soap dispenser, which I thought had such a great shape and that really nice silver top. And then here I have uh, an old jar candle with the label and wax all removed. And then this container for a wheel of brie. And then the box for some waffle cone bowls. And some sprinkles, a little sprinkle decanter, the ones that has the multi-pack, and as well as some paper towel rolls and toilet paper rolls. And then this old popcorn tin. Now for most of these projects, I'm going to be using sheets of this gray and white marble scrapbook paper, along with this chrome paint from Rust-Oleum. However, you can use any combination of paper and paint to customize these projects and suit them to your likes and color schemes. For example, if you prefer warmer toned marbles and gold accents, you can opt for a warmer toned marble sheets like this one shown here, and then use gold as your accent paint and you can see how well those would go together. And then you can see again the difference if you have those cooler gray tones that they really require the silver accent. Other options would include some faux wood and maybe a nice matte black accent paint would go nicely with that one. Um, this script paper is one of my favorites and again a black would look nice as the accent paint. And then of course there's a whole selection of black and white uh, scrapbook papers that you could use that would go either well with the white or the black as a background. There's this tile one here and then of course there's the gingham and the buffalo check and then also this nice black and white stripe pattern. Now if you prefer to go for more colors for example you can go with this white polka dot with a blue background and a nice white paint would accent this very well. And then a little bit more colorful, another example would be this um, scrapbook paper. And that would also work well with the white. And you can also go into some of the almond tones with that particular piece. Um, and then you can see uh, with the next piece, uh, some more color and how that would make, how cute that would be for these all these projects as well. Uh, I will cut off those little edges though so that it was full circles on your prints. But you can see how these two would make a great combination for these projects as well. But today we're going to be doing the faux marble with a silver chrome finish. And first up is this faux marble wastebasket. Okay, so this one is super easy. All I'm doing is I'm going to take the lid to the tin and I'm going to take some E6000 glue and just go all around the rim with a little bit of E6000, a nice thin stream. And then I'm gonna also add some dots of hot glue and then just put the lid of the tin on the bottom of the tin. And then I'm gonna spray the whole thing with the silver paint. Once the paint is dry, I'm going to start applying the pieces of scrapbook paper. So first I'm gonna just take some Mod Podge and put a nice thin even layer on the side of the can. I am going over the seam there of the can. And um, I'm gonna just take a full sheet. Now these sheets were eight and a half by 11 sheets of the marble paper. These I got from Hobby Lobby. And um, I just cut off like the bottom three inches, so it was still eight and a half long, uh, uh, wide. And then I just cut off uh, so that it was kind of eight inches long. And it just so happened to fit in between uh, the two ridges on this particular tin. But, you know, you could make it as long or as wide as you want. And then what I'm going to do is just kind of space them out. I'm just eyeballing them there uh, to make sure that I have a little bit of a space in between where I still have that silver peeking through. And I'm gonna just tape um, the one in place so that I kind of have an idea as to where I wanna place the others and then go ahead and add some more of that Mod Podge so that I can add my next piece of paper. And when I apply it, I do wanna make sure that I am leaving that space uh, the little spaces in between, about an inch, an inch and a half, and then just smoothing it all down. 
and um, then just go back and seal that edge make sure that it's nice and tight onto the um, top of the container and then I'm going to go ahead and add some more of the Mod Podge to add my third piece of paper. Again just lining it up making sure I have the right spacing and smoothing it out and sealing those edges. Then I'm going to set it aside and make sure that the first layer gets nice and dry and then once that's dry I'm going to go back with some more Mod Podge and give a couple layers of top coat. And then that's it! there is the finished project. And here is the before and after comparison. Looks much better than that old nasty popcorn tin. Next up is a faux marble tissue holder. For this I'm going to use that waffle bowl box and I'm going to just cut off all the flaps at the top of the box. Next I'm going to take a new box of tissues and remove that oval tab at the top. I'm going to use that as my template uh, to create my hole in my tissue box holder and I'm going to just kind of measure it make sure I got it even centered into the middle of the box and then go ahead with a sharpie and mark all around the exterior of my template. Then I'm going to just kind of flip it over so that I can get a nice round oval shape on the other end. Next I'm going to go ahead and open up the box so that I can use a scissors to cut out the oval shape. Once that's done I'm going to just take the box and kind of hold it in place while I now trace the oval on the inside flaps. And then once that's done, I'll go ahead again with my scissors and just cut out this second oval. And then once that's done, I'm just going to line it back up again and use some hot glue to reseal the box. Next, I'm going to paint the box with my metallic chrome paint. To determine the size I wanted to cut my paper, I took a measurement of the top of my box. And this box was about four and three quarters inches um, on both sides. So I knew that I wanted to leave a little bit of the silver or edging around. So I just cut a four and a half inch square of paper. So this way when I place it on top, it did give me a little bit of the silver on the edges. Then I did the same with the side of the box. I measured down to get about a five inch measurement uh, lengthwise and then it was about four and a half inches widthwise and then just uh, cut a little short of both of those measurements in order to get that edging again on the paper. To get the hole in the top of the paper I again used my little oval template and uh, again just measured to make sure that I kind of had it centered and just traced the um, template around, flipped it over so that I could get that nice oval on the top and then just punctured in the middle with my scissors and cut around the oval. And I did cut on the inside of the oval because I do want it to be a little bit smaller than the hole that I made in the box so this way I make sure that I'm covering all the edges with the paper. Then before applying I just uh, wanted to measure the fit and make sure that uh, the everything was lined up right and that that was going to work and once I confirmed that I just went back with some Mod Podge and put a nice thin layer again on the top of the box and then applied my paper. And then onto the sides where I will again do a nice thin and even layer of the Mod Podge. And then before adding my paper I really want to make sure that the Mod Podge is not too heavy or that the paper is not going to get too wet. So sometimes I'll either let it dry a little or I will uh, fan it off with the paper just so that it uh, dries a little and it's nice and, and kind of at a tacky stage. And this way it really helps cut down on any of that welting or uh, crinkling that you get sometimes when the paper just gets too wet from the Mod Podge. So um, once I have gotten all of the pieces of paper on, I'm going to let that first coat dry completely before going back and adding a top coat. And you can add a couple of layers of top coat here to give it a really secure finish. And then you're good to go. Just place a regular box of tissues inside, pull the tissue out the top, and there you have a faux marble tissue holder. And here is the before and after from waffle bowl box to faux marble tissue holder. Next up are the glass canisters from previous jar candles.
And here's an example of what my candles looked like before I burnt down the candles and removed any of the excess wax and the labels. And um, sometimes I'll use this Goo Gone if I'm having trouble with either the labels or the wax and it works really well. Then I'm going to take these crystal drawer pulls that I purchased from Walmart for $4.98 and glue them to the tops of the lids. To make an inner chamber for one of my canisters, I'm going to take this small cheese jar and just add some E6000 to the bottom and glue it to the center of my canister. This creates two separate spaces so that I could put Q-tips in the middle and cotton balls in the section around. You could also add a strip of the marble paper to the outside, again using some Mod Podge, but I think I'm going to just keep mine nice and clear and here you have the before and after. And now on to the toothbrush holder. For this project, I'm going to use this empty sprinkles container and I will be painting around the rim of the top. So I want to go ahead and remove that sticker. And then once that's nice and clean and clear, um, I did go ahead and add back that topper. I probably should not have done that because I figured out this would somehow be better to paint with the topper on. It would be giving more protection but it ended up kind of getting some paint underneath in that gap, even though I was trying to be careful and not let that happen. So it would have been better to just tape directly onto the top of the plastic. Um, but you can see there, once the, the paint was on, it did look nice just around the rim. And then I went back with my Mod Podge on the plastic part of the container. And again, then just added my strip of marble scrapbook paper and Mod Podged it on letting that first coat again dry completely and then going back with several coats of the Mod Podge on top. And then here we have it with the cap back on and then here is the before and after from a sprinkle holder to toothbrush holder. Project 5 is the faux marble soap dispenser. So first I just took all of the labels and adhesive off of the previous dispenser and then I just went back with again a piece of the marble scrapbook paper First, I put on a nice thin layer again, thin and even of the Mod Podge. And I am starting up at the neck of the dispenser, right at the silver, um, you know, where the pump is. And then just again, went all the way around the bottle, making a nice even coat all the way down. And then I'm going to just go ahead and add that strip of marble paper in the center. Again, just giving it a little bit of a fan, making sure that it's kind of at that tacky stage. And then it's just easy enough to wrap the paper all the way around and cut off any excess and then go back and seal the edges. Then I'm going to let that dry completely and then go back with a final several top coats and there is the before and after. Project 6 is a faux marble vanity caddy. For this project, I'm going to use three of the half gallon cartons. And I'm going to measure up three inches from the bottom and then cut each of the cartons off at that point. So I'll have three three inch high cartons and then I'm going to hot glue the three cartons together. Next I'm going to use the milk carton caps for feet for the caddy and I'm going to just add a dab of the E6000 in the middle and then two strips of hot glue to either side. And then I'm going to attach those to each of the four corners. Then I'm going to spray the whole thing with my metallic silver chrome paint. Once the paint is dry, I'm going to go ahead and add my strips of marble paper. Again, just cutting a little short of the, of the length and width so that I can get some of that silver edging. And then I'm going to just go ahead and apply the paper as I have done before. So again, just nice thin layers of the Mod Podge, let it get a little tacky, and then apply all of the paper all the way around. And then once that's completely dry, I will go back again with several layers of the top coat. And here's the finished project, a place for all of your products to keep them nice and orderly. And here is the before and after from milk cartons to faux marble caddy. And lastly, we have the faux marble makeup caddy. For this project, I'm going to use this brie container. I'm going to just use the base of it. And then also some of these toilet paper and paper towel rolls that I've cut down and I'm going to spray the insides of the paper rolls as well as the base of the container all with my silver chrome paint. Then I'm again going to take that marble paper and this time I'm actually just using uh, so many of the scraps from the previous project so there's all little pieces of uh, scraps of leftover pieces that I have previously cut and again just going to do the Mod Podge and then wrap it around the toilet rolls 
and just seal it off on the edges. Then I'm going to just go ahead and repeat that for all the rolls. And then once um, those are all dry, I'm going to take the rolls and I'm going to actually just cut these on a diagonal so that I can create a nice little shape for my caddy. And I'm going to cut them in all different lengths. So this one here is probably about two inches uh, at the tallest point. And then there's going to be some three inches, four inches. Cut them all different, just get a little variation um, in the different lengths. And then um, if you can see on the edges, they are a little bit um, unfinished. So on this one here on the right hand side, I did go in and just kind of give it a little edge of the silver paint. And to do that, I am just taking a piece of scrap paper, I'm wrapping it around the roll, and then just spraying the very top. And then I can just take the paper away and then it just leaves that little ribbon of paint at the very tippy top. Then I'm just going to go once again with the Mod Podge, painting on several layers of the top coat. Now once these rolls have been um, covered in the paper and then also painted with several coats of the Mod Podge, they are pretty sturdy. Um, a lot of times people say, oh, those are going to be too flimsy, but actually they, they are pretty thick um, after all those coats of paint and the paper. But um, then I'm going to just take all of my pieces, kind of arrange them in the shape that I want, and then I'm going to begin gluing them to the base. So I'm going to just take the E6000 and then add a little bit of uh, hot glue, just a couple of dabs, to just hold it in place while the E6000 sets up. And I'll repeat that for all of the rolls. And then when I'm finished, this is what it looks like. And then it's ready to fill with lipsticks and mascaras and brushes and other makeup items. And here's the before and after from toilet rolls to makeup caddy. Well, I hope you have enjoyed these repurposed bathroom decor and organization DIYs made from recycled trash items. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give us a thumbs up and please share with any family and friends you think would also enjoy this video. Please leave a comment to let me know what you think. And if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you join the family. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on FabTax, where we're putting the extra in ordinary, one DIY at a time.